Okay, so you are Jacob. How do you say your last name, Jacob? Ursua. Ursua. And you emailed me with a question uh, about your copter. And it's the kind of question where I, I often find myself thinking, you know, if I could just get five minutes alone in a room with, wait a minute, no, that doesn't sound right. If I could just be, you know, if I were just there physically to look at the quad, we could probably solve it really quickly uh, rather than going back and forth with like 27 emails. Uh, so I thought, well, you know, now that this is my full-time job, uh, I have no excuse for not doing this more often. So, you know, you're just the lucky winner today. But tell me what the problem is that you're having. Okay. So I got a new FC and ESC. So I got that all started up and connected properly. Setting it up in beta flight, everything worked fine on 3.1.7. And then I thought, I'm just going to upgrade to 3.2.3. I did that, and then everything got configured just fine. But when I went into the receiver tab, my auxiliary channels were at 1,500 and wouldn't go down to 1,000. They were just acting wonky. Uh-huh. Um, and, but the, the other channels, the first four channels, all worked correctly? Yeah. That's, that's pretty interesting because if you had misconfigured something about your receiver in the, in the transition, then like nothing would work. So it's kind of hard to imagine what would cause just the first four channels to work. But I, I have some ideas. Let's, let's do this. Let's look. Um, have you got the quad plugged in right now? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Plug Check it into the computer. Power. By the way, I see you've got the X-Hover stingy, the stingy frame there. How do you like that? Yeah, it looks really nice and feels really nice. Yeah? Yeah. That's a good frame. Yeah, anyway. Um, and we'll go into beta flight, and um, I've got your screen right here. Um, so go ahead and connect. And let's just go to the receiver tab. And I'm going to guess that you... Oh, by the way, you turned on expert mode, right? Did you know you can go yeah. up to those gears, the gear icon, up in the upper right? And you can uh, permanently enable that, If which I always do that. that I, I don't know if you knew that existed and you just hadn't got to it, but uh, expert mode is designed to get rid of some of the options that a beginner maybe shouldn't touch, like fail-safe. Maybe they shouldn't tweak the fail-safe, but... For those who've been doing this long enough, it's annoying to have to constantly turn that on. So there's there's something there. Yeah, um, I just forgot to do that when I transitioned to the new beta flight. Gotcha. Oh, right. You just yeah, you just transitioned to the standalone. Uh, yep, mm -hmm. yep. So then, go ahead and turn on your transmitter. And is your does your receiver power up from USB, or do you need to plug a battery in? Uh, let me plug in the battery. Okay, and you do have your props off which naturally you should. Yes. Yes. Excellent, good. And then we'll look here, and I see you're at 1,500, 1,500, and 1,006. So go ahead and like you know move the throttle up and down for me. Yep, yep, yep. All of them are moving. So then the aux channels are all at 1,500. So then the next thing I do whenever I've got an issue where like I'm not seeing what I think I should be seeing in the receiver tab is I want to go back to the radio and like th most radios will have something I call it the channel monitor because that's what FreeSky calls it but it's basically going to be a screen on the radio where you can see what channels the radio thinks it's outputting so where do you, do you have any idea where that might be on your radio yeah okay so now we want to and, and of course the aux channels like channel 5 is at 1500 which is consistent with what we're seeing but what happens if you like flip a switch? Does it move? Okay, oh, so in the quad. yeah, do it again. Oh, oh, I see, I, I, I see. I no, I'm, I'm getting it now. So I thought you were telling me they weren't moving at all, but you're saying they just they go move. To, they go, to, they move. But okay, that's a much less weird question. I will say there is a setting in Betaflight that I was I was getting ready to go this direction, but it's not. But I'll tell you about it anyway because it might be interesting. There's a setting in Betaflight. It's something in the in the command line. It's like max aux channels. I don't remember the exact syntax. You can actually disable some of the aux channels um, and like it would clear up some of the processing time on, on older flight controllers where that needed as many processor cycles as they could possibly get. Um, then that's something that, that you would do is you would reduce that. So I thought maybe you had somehow changed that and didn't have, but then you wouldn't even see them at all in the receiver tab, which is not what was going on. So what you've got actually, let's go back and look at the, the, the output screen on your, on your radio. Um, 
And can you can you light it? Can you make the screen light up at all? Yeah, there we go. You can see it much better that way. Now flip the aux switch again, and let's look at what it does. So it is going. We can see in the channel monitor that it's going. Which one? Which one are you flipping? Which channel? Five, six. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like it is going from. Yeah. Wow. Well, that is interesting. And it does that with all the switches too. That's the three position is going all the way down and up. So that's channel seven. Hold on. Do channel seven again. Hold on. Uh, channel seven. Yeah. Now channel seven is going all. Okay. Put it. Yeah. Put it in the, all. Yeah. Put it there. And now do it again. 2,500. Wow. Well, that, that is interesting. Because here we can see in the channel monitor that it is going down to a thousand, or it looks like it ought to yeah. be, but Betaflight is not before, seeing it. Yeah. And before I upgraded the three point two point three, it worked just fine. Upgraded, it was doing this. Then I actually downgraded to three point two point two and three point one point seven. Um, maybe thinking it was three point two, and it was still doing it. Even when you restored your three one seven configuration. Well, that's pretty weird. There's just no way that... And you didn't change anything about the radio, presumably. No. There's no, That's pretty weird that you restored your 317 configuration and it didn't go back to working the way it was because there's really nothing that could have changed about the radio, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah. And another thing mm -hmm. is I adjusted the endpoints and whenever I would do it... Um, Beta flight would show it at 1,000 and it would work fine. Mm -hmm. And then the moment I disconnect power from my quad and then reconnect it, it had the same issue. I can actually right. do that right now. Yeah, let's let's do that. So here your endpoints are at so, 100, 100. So it really should be going all the way down. And then I can do that all the way through my other channel. Let me, let me look at the... Uh, what are you doing with the endpoints, though? I don't. I'm not sure. I understand. Uh, uh, I think these are the endpoints for like the beginning of the channel. But yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Looking at looking at the aux one, which uh -huh. I did that. Which oh, is I see. So now aux one is here. aux one is ten ten, and what is what is that set to? Uh, it's set to a hundred percent, right? So what did you? Yeah, change? I brought that up a little bit, and then I brought it back down, and fixed. Wow. But then it undoes itself. Wow, that is really something. Go to the configuration tab. It has to be something to do with the radio. It's just, um, let me see your receiver type. I'm on iBus. Yeah, well, that's what you ought to be on. <sighs> hmm. So when you change the endpoint, it does read correctly. Uh, that means that the radio is capable of sending a signal that Betaflight recognizes as 1,000 microseconds. Let's do this. Uh, in the radio, can you make a new model? Yeah. Can you make a fresh model? Um, yeah, is it bound? Is that right? Yep. Okay, so let's uh, go to Betaflight. We'll go to the receiver tab. And, yeah, they're, they're, that's all moving. The ma I don't know if the mapping's correct. The switches are still reading 1,500. Wow. Oh, hold up. I may have to do something else in my radio. I need to yeah, you got my... Exactly. Uh, so here you're just changing which switch goes to which aux channel. Okay. Yep. All right, um... Let's do this. The next thing I'll do is uh, you got your configuration saved in Betaflight, right? Yeah. So let's reflash the board. When you, uh, when you 
restore when you flashed it to the new version, did you paste your configuration in or did you rebuild it from scratch? Um I pasted it. I don't think I clicked saved and then I just redid from scratch. Well, I you know, I got I it's this is a real it's a weird one. Um I can't get I can't think of anything off the top of my head that would cause this. So let's just let's just try what we can try, but uh go ahead disconnect and reflash the board. What flight controller is this? Uh it's the DYS Omnibus. So or let's DYS. Let's do this. P2 let's, whatever. Do you, and do you know the uh, the correct? Uh, oh, in, in Betaflight three two, it changed to BL. The, the DFU oh, command BL. changed to BL for bootloader. They made the argument that DFU is just happens to be the kind of bootloader that we're using. But DFU, you know, BL is I don't know. They just like changing things for no reason. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, you may I need to do it the uh, button way. Well, I th you may need to. Uh, you may need to do a. Uh, the driver fixer. Uh, I ran that last night. Uh, let me press the button. Okay. Let me try it this way. There we go. Oh, yeah, you got it. Interesting that BL didn't work. That's a little weird. Hold I did DFU on 3.1.7 and it, was, it worked. Yeah, BL should work as well. Okay. Yep, all right. So let's go ahead and flash it. And we definitely do want full chip erase. Let's make sure we get rid of everything that might be there. Go ahead 3.2.3? Yeah, go ahead. Use 323. Three. Yep. And power cycle it, plug it in, and connect. Um, so serial RX on your one is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Receiver tab or sorry, uh, configuration tab. And we haven't changed anything now. So this is stock default config. Um, Uh, and go ahead, serial receiver and IBUS is correct. That is, and go ahead and save that. Don't change anything else. And now in the receiver tab, we should see data. Yeah, boy, boy, oh! Giggity. What happened? Did it fix? There you I go. Have absolutely no clue. I I I do not either. I do not know. <laughs> I really don't know. I'm compl I cannot think of one single option in beta flight that would cause what you just saw at all. I really can't. But yeah, I, I guess I was just like I have absolutely no clue. <laughs> I I don't you, you're not alone. I mean, you clearly know what you're doing. I can tell you know, that this is not your first rodeo. Um, and I really, like, I can't even guess what might have caused that. I don't think there's, if it were, uh, no, because the endpoints are controlled by the transmitter. Now, are we still on the new model that you made? We are. Yeah. Can we go back to the first model and see if the problem, I mean, I don't think it should because yeah. the problem still happened when we made the new model, but... <laughs> I really I'm glad it fixed itself I hope it stays fixed because I'm really about to be stumped if it <laughs> I really got nothing <laughs> now that we have gone back to the other model let's go to the receiver tab and uh, let's see if it's working it is great well <laughs> so here's my here's my official diagnosis um Sometimes when you upgrade, and especially if you upgrade without full chip erase selected, stuff gets screwed up. <laughs> now, actually, it, sh it should always do a full chip erase when you upgrade for to a different version. It can tell there's something inside the code that it can look at it and go, oh, this is not right, and it resets it. But for some reason, there's sometimes stuff left over in the, the EEPROM uh, that the leftover configuration data that screws things up. 
Did you do fl full chip erase when you upgraded? Uh, I thought so. But oh. I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe you did. The other thing is, if you pasted the old config back in between like 317 and 323, it's possible that something got screwed up there. Although I can't imagine what it could possibly have been uh, that would cause that to read wrong. Um, I also wonder if there's something maybe... Uh, could it have been the configurator that was screwed up? Like... Like, um, over in the modes tab, look at the modes tab. Well, it's not going to show anything because we, cause we deleted it. But in the modes tab, you had, like, a beeper mode that was based on, like, 1,000, right? Because I heard your beeper going off. Uh, or no, was it based on, like, 1,500? Uh, I don't know why it was going off, but it was something. Maybe my uh, arm, I don't know. Yeah. So I have to wonder if maybe it was just the receiver tab that was screwed up in some way in the configurator and that actually Betaflight was seeing 1,000. I don't know. That's just a – and maybe when we reflashed it, we kind of jiggled, jiggled it, kicked it a little. I don't know. But the bottom line is that in a situation like this, when there's something – like in this case, it was just something completely inscrutable. It wasn't like, oh, yeah, no, you got to change this option. And I really thought it was going to be something like easy like that. Then the first thing you do is you reflash the board. <laughs> you saw we created a new model in case something was screwed up in the transmitter. And, uh, yeah, then – and then you could – I would say reinstall the configurator. But in this case, uh, the re there's nothing to reinstall. It's just an app that you downloaded. But um, the other play thing I'll say is that – if you've got a really old version of Betaflight, like 3.0.1 or 3.1, the modern configurator is not 100% compatible with that. And one of the th ways that manifests is that you go to the receiver tab and you just see blank spaces, no lines. And people are like, and I'm like, yeah, you got to upgrade. Sorry. <laughs> so there you go, Bo. I, I think it's working, right? Is it working, Jacob? Can we fix it? it? It should be. Okay. Hopefully. <laughs> well, as soon as we hang up, it'll stop working again. But uh, for now, we'll call this one solved. Uh, what? Do you, anything else? Yeah. What do you got? Anything else you got to say? Not, not much. Just thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and yeah, I hope to be doing a lot more of these uh, now that I now that this is my full time job. I hope to be doing a lot more. One of the things I really hope to get out of this is the ability to do spend more time interacting directly with you guys and you guys all you people are like okay well how do i get you to do it i don't know i mean uh, as people send me questions i answer them i answer as many of the questions that i get as i can usually by email or chat but every so often i get one and i go oh that would make a good video or i have an hour free and hey you never know you might be the next lucky winner all right we're gonna sign off now <laughs>